What's good YouTube, it's Justice I used to be paying today I'm back with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about how rap groups are dead. Rap groups are pretty much dead in the modern era. The last major rap group that we had was the Migos before they broke up, you know, an RIP takeoff. Um, but even when the Migos were kind of running things and one of the biggest acts in rapper, one of the biggest acts in music in general, rap groups were still kind of a dying art form. There weren't a lot of them then, and in terms of mainstream, they're pretty much our zero at this point. Now, of course, rap groups still exist. I'm not saying they're completely gone. We've got groups like the Suicide Boys, Earth Gang, and Run the Jewels, but still, in general, there's no modern day rap group that's kind of a rap conglomerate that's selling hundreds of thousands of first week sales. Like, they, they just don't exist anymore. But in previous eras of rap, we pretty much always had a couple of groups, at least a handful of groups that were doing really, really well for themselves and running the game in terms of charts and numbers like that, all around the same time, if not at the exact same time. If you look at an era like the 2000s, you had the Hot Boys at the very, very beginning of the decade, then you got 3-6 Mafia, you got Dipset, and a whole bunch of other groups that were also mixed into there. If you look at the 90s, you have groups like Outkast, you have you know uh, the Wu-Tang Clan, you have Bone thugs in harmony you have the Fugees, all Again, around the same era, maybe not directly on top of each other, but around the same time period. If you even go back to the 80s, you had NWA, Run DMC, Salt and Pepper. So there's always been a major history of rap groups dominating the game in rap until now, pretty much. This is the first era, speaking on actually right now, without any dominant rap group. There's not one. Not one right now in, in this modern era. Now, if you go back to the Migos, okay, but I mean, I'm talking right now. There isn't a single rap group that's really dominating in terms of musically and on the charts and stuff. And this is the first time that that's ever happened. Now, there may be some of you saying, oh, well, what about, you know, Griselda or Opium or Young Money back in the day, like back in like 2000, the early 2010s? Or what about CMG or what about Dreamville? And those are all collectives. Those aren't groups. Groups are acts that are always together. Collectives are, you know, solo acts that come together oftentimes, and they may have a name, but they're not really a group. They kind of get the best of both worlds, and that's kind of the era that we're in at this point in time. Collectives pretty much give you everything you could really want out of a group, except you don't have to have the full-time commitment and have to be a team player like you do when you're in a group. You know, you get to combine your fan bases, you get to combine with other artists that are pretty similar to you because most of the times when it comes to collectives, they're just artists who are signed under the same level l label. So oftentimes they sound pretty similar or they're around the same age. So the, me the meshing of the music is pretty easy to do. And also you get the cloud of, you know, working with other artists who are around your same genre, same age and stuff. So it's all the benefits that you could really get of a modern day rap group without having to commit full time and make the sacrifices and do things you don't want to do while also being in a group because that's typically what it takes. So yeah, we have a ton of collectives going around. Again, something like YSL, but there's no real rap group that's really committed to each other full time in the mainstream space. Which kind of led me to ask, well, why is this? And I started to search the internet, seeing what other people said, and I put together a couple answers that I think are pretty solid. The first one being that groups are just kind of out of style at this point in time. Like, it's just really not the cool thing to do to be in a major rap group. Now, obviously, people like when rappers collab with each other and there are label collectives. People like that stuff. But in terms of being a full-time group, it's just not the cool thing to do at the moment. So that's part of why. Another reason is technology and how accessible it's become, making it easier and cheaper to make music because a big, big portion of the reason as to why people had issues making music and becoming real rap stars back in the 90s and early 2000s is just because of money, right? It was super expensive to make music. It was impossible to fund it by yourself and make it sound good to a certain extent. You almost needed a label with thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to put into your music because equipment was so expensive, the regular person out there couldn't just go and make a great sounding song in terms of like sonically. Not even talking about, you know, what you're rapping about or your bars or anything like that, but just in terms of like how the song in general sounds, the beat, the mixing, all that stuff, it's very hard to do back in the day without major backing. And so because of this, because of how expensive it was to make music, because of how it was just inaffordable, a lot of the times people would come together, a lot of friends who also enjoyed rapping, if I rap and my friend raps, but we're kind of broke, 
Sometimes we would just have to come together to afford studio time, right? Studio time's always expensive. It's still expensive to this day. Or we would have to come together to buy the equipment to make our music sound good. So in exchange for that, we would have to work together sometimes. We'd have to make music together. And that was a lot of the reason why a lot of groups came together sometimes was because they couldn't really afford to have their own solo careers at the moment. So they were like, look, we just gonna come together, put our money together, make it cheaper on the individual, but at the same time in exchange, we'll just rap on each other's songs. There's also so much money and opportunity nowadays for musicians to blow up that it's like, you don't really need to be in a group. There's no incentive to be in a group because you don't need to blow up in a group or blow up because you attached your name to somebody else nowadays. There's so much room due to social media and the internet for pretty much anybody and everybody to become famous and become a star. It's like, why be in a group? Why do you have to confine yourself and work as a team and make sacrifices when you could just go over here and still have pretty much the same opportunity as you had in a group, except now all the money goes to you and all the clout stays with you rather than having to share it. And we also just live in a much more self-centered era nowadays because, again, of social media and the internet making everyone feel like they can pretty much do whatever they want on their own. You don't need to be in a team. You don't need other people. You can do your own thing. And in general, it's just very hard to get people to consistently make sacrifices for a team or for a group over a long period of time. This is why rap groups have always broken up throughout the history of rap. It's always been hard to make people sacrifice the individual for the team. But now it's even harder because that's just not the culture we have in society today. We're not out here sacrificing ourselves for everyone else anymore. That's just not a thing that we really do. And so it transfers over to the music world and to social media and to the internet. So now it's like, bro, why would I do all these sacrifices for a team? I don't really wanna do that. It's always been hard to get people to commit to a team long term, but now with social media and the clout that everyone can pretty much have access to, if you get lucky, why would you restrict yourself to a team or to a group? And finally, one of the last but most important parts of why I think groups, rap groups are really dead in terms of like the mainstream is just artists, at least rappers nowadays, the mainstream rappers, I'll say that, I'll keep it in a bowl. They don't really do it for the love of the game. Like they like rapping because it gives them the money that they want, the power, the status, all that stuff. A lot of these rappers really aren't rapping for the love of the game. They don't do it for the love of the sport. And you kind of need to have that to be in a group. You need that because why else would you want to make these sacrifices? Why else would you want to confine yourself? Why else would you want to adjust and kind of react to what's going on around you in terms of what the other people in the group want, the other people's ideas, what your manager wants for the group, what the label wants for the group? Why would you do that to yourself if you didn't love the game, if you didn't do it for the love of this, the art? And a lot of these artists aren't making, specifically mainstream rap artists, aren't making art anymore for the sake of the art. They're doing it because they like the money. They're doing it because, you know, it got them out of the streets. And I'm not even downplaying that stuff because I completely understand it. But because that, that because of that element not really being there anymore, it also makes it harder for a lot of these groups to exist in the mainstream because they're not doing it for the sake of the music. And being in a mainstream rap group, not having a solo career when you're a major star in a mainstream group is a major sacrifice. And a lot of artists, a lot of mainstream rappers, I should say, just aren't willing to make that sacrifice anymore. But the idea of a group is still a very much lucrative idea. It's not something that's just completely dead and makes no sense anymore. And that's why we see a lot of collab albums nowadays, because the idea of a group is still there. Fans still want to see certain artists work together. They like collab albums and stuff. And that's why we get major artists collabing on albums, because you get the best of both worlds. Like I mentioned earlier, you get to combine fan bases, you get to build hype, you get to make music with somebody that's really different from you or even similar to you. And you guys can kind of blow up and run the summer. That's why we see stuff like, you know, Her Loss or we see things like The Voice of the Heroes, right? Collab albums are still a very lucrative thing. So the idea of a group isn't completely dead, but the idea of completely committing yourself to a group in the mainstream light is kind of dead at the moment. So the, the the lucrative stuff behind it in terms of like combining fan bases, having money, having all the spotlight with you and this other artist, building up hype with the two different fan bases, like that's still there. And that's why we still get collective albums sometimes. But in terms of that full commitment, I just don't know how much we're gonna see that, especially going into the future. As social media gets bigger and bigger, I don't know if we'll ever really see a major rap group in the limelight again. Maybe we will, maybe we have a couple coming up, but in general, I just don't see another 
mainstream numbers charting, you know, taking over the world, winning all these awards. I don't know if I ever see that again. I think the Migos might have been the last of a dying breed. But that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe you completely disagree. Maybe you know a rap group that's going to be the next big thing in the next two years. Leave it down below in the comments. Tell me why I'm an idiot. Tell me why I'm smart. Whatever you got to say. If you made it this far, I greatly appreciate it. Have a good day. Be safe. Be blessed. Peace.